Welcome back. We're going to have a look at the last type of factorization that we're going to have a look at, which is grouping. Um, so in terms of grouping terms, but before we look at that, let's just have a look at the order. So when you have to factorize or they give you sums involving the need to factorize, you're first going to have a look at common factor, then difference of squares, two squares, then trinomials and then groupings. So with groupings, generally you'll find that you sometimes have four terms. It could be more than four terms, but generally there's four terms. And what groupings um, does is that it always leads to another type of factorization. Normally, difference of s normally it leads to um, common factor again. So what we'll have a look at is a minus b over here. That a can be you can put the a next to the b, or you can put it next to a x, or you can put it next to b x. Um, not really next to b x, but you have an option to either put those two together and those two together. So in this case, let's say I leave this a a minus b on its own here, so that becomes a minus b. This I convert to, I take out minus x as my common factor for these two terms. So now I'm working with these two terms over here. And I'm left with a, because that divided by that gives me a. That divided by that is minus b. So now I can see that they have basically now got another type of factorization I can use, which is common factor. You'll notice, if you remember from earlier on, I can now take out a minus b as my common factor and I'm left with 1 minus x. So that's my answer over there. Okay, so we're going to give you some exercises to do on this one. So there's going to be five sums that will follow and then you can just follow the same kind of protocol. Remember, if if you find that it doesn't work, you can then al also always try something else. So you could put the a next to the ax and the that you could put next to that and you might get to the same answer. Thank you. Please write down this exercise 6, it will be our last exercise for now, um, and then after you've tried to complete it, then have a look at the answers. So this over here by number 4, just take note that that's a 1 over there, that's a 1, so it's a minus b plus ab minus 1. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. We'll start with number one. We've got AC minus AD plus BC minus BD. So generally the first thing that you can look at is you, you it's about the grouping of terms. So what I would suggest you try and do is is try the first two and see if that works. So the first two and the last two. So if we group this together we can see that we can take out A as a common factor here and we're left with C minus D plus if we take out B as a common factor here we're left with C minus D. Okay so that works out in this case. That means that my highest common factor here is C minus D A plus B. Number two, I've got a squared plus three plus b plus three b. So in this case over here, I first have to get rid of the brackets. So it's just a positive times a positive is a positive, and then a positive times a positive is a positive. Once again, I can decide. I can either group these together, which doesn't really take us anywhere, or I can decide I want to group these two together over here. So, uh, apologies, I just made one error. So this here is there's supposed to be an A in front of that over there, in front of the brackets. So that means that that's A times 3, which is 3A and that's a times b which is ab so let's just write that over again so it's a squared plus 3a plus ab plus 3b so once again I can choose to group these two together 
and those two over there. So yeah, I can take out A as a common factor and I'm left with A plus 3 plus B as a common factor and I'm left with A plus 3 so that works out. So my final answer is going to be A plus 3 multiplied by A plus B. Right, so there we go. Apologies for that. So just remember that we had an A there and that's why it didn't seem to work out. Let's go to number 3. Number 3 we've got P squared minus 4R squared plus P minus 25 or minus 2R. Now that seemed a bit strange there so that's 2R. Okay so in this case there's a P and there's a P and there's an R and there's an R. So it kind of makes sense that we try to put these together. We could try that as a strategy now sometimes when it comes to grouping you might take a certain strategy and it doesn't work like in this case here it looks like it's not going to take me anywhere um, so I'm left here with minus or positive 4 if I, even if I take out 2 or 3 I'm left with 2R minus 1. So in this case this hasn't taken me anywhere. So my other option is that I can work with the uh, squares. Right? So then I've basically got P squared minus 4R squared plus P minus 2R. So if I work with the squares there, that's that's difference of squares. So it's P plus 2R P minus 2R and then that's plus P minus 2R so that works because now I've got two terms and my common factor is going to be P my common factor will be P minus 2R and then I'm left with P plus 2R plus 1 because I'm taking this whole term here dividing by that and I'm left with P plus 2R and I'm taking that whole term divided by that gives me 1 so that's number 3 number 4 I've got A minus B plus AB minus 1 so in this case over here what seems to could possibly work is if I take if I put the a is to a minus 1. I put that next to each other. Remember it's about grouping. So if I leave that as a minus 1, but here I can take out minus b as a common factor, I'm left with 1 minus a. And remember from earlier on what can I do over there? I can say that that's a plus b and that becomes a minus 1. So then I've got A minus 1 is my common factor. I'm left with 1 plus B. So that's number 4. Number 5, the last one is I've got 2A cubed minus 3A squared minus 6A plus 9. So in this case I could take these two out and say okay A squared is my common factor there and I'm left with 2a minus 1 and over here I can take out minus 3 as a common factor and I'm left with 2a minus apologies this is this is 3 divided by so that's supposed to be a 3 over there and over here that's going to be minus 3 so that means that my highest common factor is 2a minus 3 and I'm left with a squared minus 3 and that's my answer. Thanks for listening folks. Um, if, it, if there is a need there will be additional lessons that's going to be recorded for factorization but for now let's, let's work through these particular exercises that, that, that we've done.